What's going on guys, Pros and Talk here, back again with a, with my WWE SummerSlam 2019 review. SummerSlam just finished like 20 seconds ago, oh, something like that. And yes, I am rocking my Kevin, Kevin Castle t-shirt, big up to Kevin Castle and Don Tony. Um, I got this the other day, um, so big up those guys. Uh, anyway, on to this SummerSlam. This SummerSlam wasn't the worst SummerSlam I watched. Now, you're not going to say that they're going to top NXT TakeOver from last night. This NXT take this SummerSlam was decent, and it's not something I would watch again. But it was a it was a decent SummerSlam. The crowd was really flat in some of these matches, um, and you know, overall it was a decent show. But let's go into the first match of night. We have Becky versus Natalya for the uh, Raw Women's Championship. This was a good submission match. I thought that these two girls really had good chemistry, and you know they used their their um. Uh, you know, surrounded really good. Like you had a couple of um, ring post spots, and you had, um, you know, you had the shot shooter from Becky and Natalia, and then uh, Becky used the disarmor for the win, and she retains her um, WWE Women's Championship. Then we have Goldberg versus Dolph Ziggler. It was a squash match. Uh, Goldberg defeats Brock Lesnar, and then it turns into a segment where basically um, Dolph's like, "I'm the best here in WWE," and he just keeps spewing. Um, Dolph, and that was about it. And I've just got a message. Um. Anyway, after that, we had AJ Styles versus Carl Anderson. No, AJ Styles versus Ricochet for the US title. This was a good match, but I thought that it wasn't better than their Extreme Rules match. Um. Pretty good. It was a pretty solid match, but it was okay. I guess AJ wins with a Styles Clash. Uh, then we had Bailey versus Ember Moon for the WWE Women's Championship. I even forgot that this was even actually on the card until they actually had him come out and it was like, oh, well, you know, they're facing off. Um, Bailey wins. The crowd was super dead for this. Ember Moon did like a springboard and a couple of high spots. She looked good in the match, but I thought that this was a, a good time to put to give Ember Moon the women's title and. You know, give her something to actually do on the WWE main roster instead of giving it to um, Bailey because let's be honest, Bailey's title reign has been lackluster and I don't really care for it. And I'm not a fan of Bailey, as you guys know, I'm not. But at least give it to Ember Moon. Like I'm a fan of her and just like, give her a chance. You know what I mean? Like see how she goes as champion. She sinks or swims. Like I, I said that before with Samoa Joe, and they never do it with Samoa Joe. So let's hopefully this time they do it with Ember Moon, but. Who knows, but they have a clash of the champions next, so let's hope that maybe they're going to give it to maybe a moment back then, but then why would you not do it tonight? So, I don't know. This is WWE booking, brother. Then we had Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon. Now, this was one of the matches I was looking forward to on the SummerSlam card because this was actually built up pretty damn well. You had Shane McMahon, obviously, we know he's been hogging TV and he's saying, I'm the best in the world, and I'll say somebody from Chicago's guy. And... You know what, this this was a good match. Um, I like how they, in, you know, they had Elias in part of this, and he had his good involvement in this thing as well. Uh, Kevin Owens gets the win with, I think, the stunner. They were brawling um, over outside the ring and everything like that, so that was good. So Kevin Owens keeps his job. Obviously, if he lost, he would have to leave WWE. So I still, I think that at this point, hopefully, that this feud is ended at this point because they've done this twice with us. Kevin Owens being the heel and Shane being the face and they've kind of switched things now so hopefully at this point that this is over and we see no more Shane McMahon on television going I'm the best in the world and uh, then we have Charlotte versus Trish this was a this was a really good match I enjoyed this Charlotte and Trish match um you know you had a lot of good technical stuff a lot of good back and forth um Charlotte went for the figure eight for the win um I thought it was a good match I really thought that these two girls had great chemistry together and you know, one of the matches I was looking forward to was this match. Um, it, it you know it had everything in it and good. Uh, then we had one of the filler matches, Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton. Now I thought I was gonna be looking excited to this because it was like a decade, nearly a decade ago that these guys faced off. Um, you know, it will be a decade like back in, no in November it will be that they faced off. Um, you know, at the first time when they had Team Orton versus Team Kofi, and then I was excited for this. I was like. Nah, and then I wanted to basically see, like, the New Day do something, like, maybe a break up with the New Day, because, yes, the New Day are great, and they sell good merch, but they've been getting stale for a while now, and it's about time that they maybe change things up with the New Day, like, like I said with Bailey, I was talking to one of my friends, 
online and they were saying like, oh, Bailey, you know, we were saying like, Bailey, it's not really action. Well, let Bailey get a character change. And this is the same thing with The New Day. I don't want them to change characters, but let The New Day split up. And I know people are going to not like this, but split up The New Day is probably the best thing for them because you're going to actually, you know, see how Big E is going to do it. Let's see how Big E is as a main eventer. And if they're really pushing as main eventer, and let's see how they book him well. Because him and the Kofi feud, I would really like that and like a New Day feud because that would be the best thing for the New Day right now. I know that they're selling merch and they're selling pancakes and the kids like them and stuff, but their shit is getting old. And, you know, if you want to keep people invested in your product, and I know people are leaving Ron Smith and they're watching it every week, but if you want people to get back to watching Ron Smith and you just break up the New Day and, you know, See how they go as single competitors. Like, yes, um, you know, Xavier was might become a mid card and a tag team champion, but let's see how like, Big E becomes because a lot of people are saying that Big E is going to be the next big thing and stuff, and he's a main eventer, which I believe he's going to be a main eventer. But let's see how WWE will book him in it, and let's see how uh, Kofi gets in a Big E feud with Luck because, like, Big E's going to be sat there thinking, well, how come I'm not the DW champion? You know, Kofi's had these chances, and, you know, I've been busting my ass. And I got myself injured, and I still not got the recognition, and then here's Kofi, still WWE Champion, and then he's Big E, like, I want a title shot. Uh, then we have Bray White versus Finn Balor. I, I fucking love Bray White's entrance, like, that's best entrance on the main roster. Um, it was a nothing match, Bray White gets to win. Um, and then we have Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. Basically, a typical Brock Lesnar match at the beginning of the match because you have Brock like doing suplexes and killing Seth Rollins. Then Seth Rollins gets some offense. He does some super kicks. He does a um, table spot. Um, then he does a couple of curse stunts. Um, Brock kicked out of that, and then at the end, Seth uh, Brock goes for the F5. Then he reverses that into a super kick, and then a curse stomp and gets the win. And Brock and Seth wins the Universal Title slots. They almost how it changed. This weekend was the Universal title because we had no title changes on NXT. And, you know, we get to this show and we only had one title change. So that's first time in like a long time I think we've ever had just like one title change on either like a takeover or a SummerSlam because I can't remember the last time we just had one, just like one entire uh, title change. So what do you guys think about this SummerSlam? I know this is like a quick review of everything and stuff, but um, leave your thoughts in some time, uh, of your thoughts in SummerSlam 2019 in the comments. And I'll check you guys later. Peace.